All right, welcome back. So we are going to take a look at our last item, which is ISO, not ISO. It's ISO, and it stands for the International Organization for Standardizations. Yes, I had to look that up because I didn't remember what it stood for. ISO is formerly known as ASA, which, which was known as film speed back in the day of film. So today, ISO actually is referring to a digital camera sensor speed or how sensitive the sensor is to light. What happens is at 100 ISO, the camera's sensor is the least sensitive, meaning that it needs more light to make an exposure. And at 6400 over here, the sensor is gonna be more sensitive, meaning it needs less light. So if you're in a bright and sunny location, you can shoot at 100. If you are in a dark situation, you're gonna need 6400. Now, remember I said everything in the camera has two options. One is it controls the amount of light. This is the controlling the amount of light by being either more sensitive or less sensitive. It also controls film grain. So let's go ahead and move on to the next slide here. All right, so we can see on this new slide here that I have started with an ISO of 100. And ISO is really easy because it always doubles itself. And remember, just like aperture and shutter speed, these are whole stops. You do have third of stops in ISO as well, but for sake of videos, we're gonna be using whole stops because this makes it easier. 100 to 200 to 400 to 800 to 1600 to 3200 to 6400. These are examples of ISO. And once again, ISO 100 is less sensitive, so it needs more light. As you go up the scale, the sensor becomes more sensitive and needs less light. Now the trade-off here is at ISO 100, you're gonna get the best image quality and less grain, or in this case, noise in your image. And as you move up the scale, you're gonna get a worse image quality, meaning you're gonna get a grainier image or more noise in the image. Grain really had to deal with film. We don't really have film grain in digital images, and so we now call that noise in the image. Now, one thing I should mention here, just because we have this scale and it says worse image quality here at 6400, and this really is gonna be dependent on your camera. My camera and a lot of cameras actually take pretty good photos with not a lot of noise in them at 6400. Some cameras shoot at 1600 and have a lot of noise. Now, most of your cameras today are gonna to be pretty much noise free at 3200 and 6400, and if you do have it, it's gonna be minor. Cameras have gotten really good and sensors have gotten really good. What you're gonna see though, is just your image quality compared to an ISO 100 just isn't as good at 6400 as it would be at 100. So there's definitely a loss of quality, but it's not as great as it was back when you used to shoot film. Now down here I have ISO ranges are from 50 usually to 204,800. Now this is kind of like the greatest range that I've ever seen. However, most cameras, if you went out and bought something today, are gonna be between 100 and 51,200. I never really on my camera go above 12,800, but that doesn't mean that my camera can't go higher than that. And as cameras get better and better, the image quality at high ISO gets better and better. So let's take a difference. What's the difference between taking a photo at ISO 100 and ISO 25,600? And this was shot on my Canon 5D Mark III, not the newest camera, but I think it's a good reference of the difference between shooting at different ISOs. Now, what I did is I took the image and my setting is both at 2.8. However, this one over here is at ISO 100. You're gonna see a Greater tonal scale, meaning from white to black, you're gonna see more gradations, and you're gonna see more accurate color. 
when we get into here, we're starting to get a lot of noise and this is starting to get what's called muddy. This image is muddying up and we have this horrible yellow cast to this image and all the colors are super saturated. We're over here, they're much more neutral. So what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna go to the next slide. So this next slide, what I did is I took that same image and I just zoomed in a little bit. They don't match up exactly, but I cropped them the same size and sized them the same. So where they don't totally line up, they're zoomed in exactly the same amount. So over here we have the ISO 100 and we can see how clean and smooth this image. And then over here you can see all that grain and noise and horrible color that we're getting in this image. There's almost no tonal scale. It's just either kind of a bright or a dark muddy mess. That's giving you a good idea of what the difference is. Remember, this is an extreme case. Remember I said, I've never shot at 25,600 actually on my camera before. But what I'm trying to do is give you an exaggerated example of the difference of ISOs. So this is gonna be the last slide here. And basically what we're doing with ISO a lot of time is kind of getting our camera so that it can shoot within certain parameters. This chart right here, I've noticed I've made some little marks. So at ISO 100 to 200, basically you are using that setting for a sunny day. Around 400, maybe not all the way up to 800, maybe 400 to 640, you're gonna be using that setting somewhere for a cloudy day. And then if it's dark or indoors, maybe you're gonna be setting your camera to 1600 to 3200. Now, this takes into account certain things. First, these are my settings for shooting with a 2.8 lens. If you have a really slow lens where your minimum aperture is gonna be 5.6, you're gonna have to jump this up, maybe a stop or two, to compensate for the amount of light that doesn't enter your camera. So this is where that fast lens or that pro lens that has a minimum aperture of 2.8 or lower is gonna really help you. If you have a lens that's two stops slower, two eight to four to five six, that's two stops less light that comes into the camera. You have to compensate somewhere for that. So you're gonna have to end up bumping up your ISO to higher than normal to compensate for that slow lens. Now, if you don't understand what I'm talking about, don't worry. The next video, we're gonna be going into equivalent exposures and exposures, and that's gonna make it a little bit easier for you to understand that. But basically, this is a guide of where to set your ISO so you kind of get in the right parameters. And what that means is basically when you're taking a photo, you're going to be setting your shutter speed or your aperture to a very specific number. Sometimes it only matters what the shutter speed is. Sometimes it only matters really where the aperture is. But most of the time, it's going to matter where the shutter speed and the aperture are and you want those to be very specific numbers. Now, the only way you can achieve those numbers is to know where you need to set your ISO so that you can achieve those settings depending on what's happening with your camera, like what type of photo you're taking and how much light is available in the situation. So what this does is give you a general idea of where to set your ISO in the beginning because you're gonna have no idea. Most people just have it set at 100 and they're trying to take pictures indoors and nothing comes out, well, that's because you need your sensor to be more sensitive, so you need to move your ISO up higher. Hopefully this is helpful and gives you a general idea of what you need to set your ISO at in the beginning so you can achieve the other settings to get the correct exposure in your camera. Well, that's it for this video on ISO. If you found this helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave those below. And as always, don't forget to subscribe.